Hey Sagittarius, welcome to your reading for June 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please go ahead and email me. All of the information is in the description box below, including the readings that I offer. Now, read through that and let me know what you'd like to move forward with. But if you have trouble deciding, please still email me. We'll chat about the situation a little bit and I'll help you decide, all right? So first and foremost, these messages are meant to be timeless. So whenever you see it, regardless of whether it's actually in June or not, and it resonates with you, then that is the message for you at that moment. Yeah, um, I'm keeping it the same and a little bit different. Of course, we're starting with the Golden Universal Tarot for our general freestyle reading. If you're new to the channel, you do get a, a, a look into how this reading works. And if you would like to order one, you can do so. You won't be able to see the cards because we're going to be having a face to face conversation. But in the private reading, I do focus on the cards. The camera is focused on the cards. So we'll be able to see the actual spread then. Uh, other than that, you get a, ch uh, a chance to feel out the energy, the flow of this reading. After that, I'm going to do the same and keep it with the Oracle guidance at the very end. But instead of, well, this month I've decided to go with a brand new deck and I'm using the Sacred Rebel Oracle for the Oracle guidance this month. I love this deck. It's fantastic. It's almost been a little scary <laughs> how appropriate the messages are that come out in relation to the readings here. Okay. So getting into your reading, um, Sagittarius, we have a little bit of a pre-shuffle here. Um, and it's interesting because in the beginning, like the first time I was starting to channel, some things came out. Uh, memorably, specifically, you had the Six of Pentacles and the Five of Swords. There was a situation that's good. And then there were a bunch of other, other cards that were coming out, um, but things were getting jump, uh, kind of mixed up. So I put, it, I put them all back and now I'm, I, I try it again and we have a little bit more, but it's kind of talking about the same thing, okay? There is a situation in which someone here is choosing to love themselves or honor themselves more. Um, with the Six of Pentacles and the Five of Swords, I feel like there was some sort of relationship here I, uh, for whoever Sagittarians, what the, the Sagittarians that I'm channeling for, there was a relationship that was an imbalanced. Um, and it's almost, it's almost as if it felt like someone, oh shoot, my sage just fell. It's almost as if someone kind of like took over somebody's life and almost kind of ruined it in a sense, or maybe you feel like they ruined your life or they're trying to ruin your life. There's some sort of narcissistic energy here that has been manipulating someone. Um, my, maybe through over emotional means, because I heard there's some sort of emo over emotionality around it. Now also it could be Sagittarius that you have been dealing with a narcissist, but you might have been overly emotional about it. Or it's a situation in which your emotions have finally started to take control or take a hold. Um, or your emotions are, be are so strong at the moment that you can't deny them any longer. What you have right now on the table is the Queen of Cups, the Tower, and the Four of Cups in reverse. All right? So it's almost as if some uh, <laughs> catast catastrophe has stricken or catastrophe struck. Um, and now someone is moving from a place of empathy, compassion, emotion, rather than just logic, or someone is finally starting to honor their emotions and not allowing themselves to continue to be in a situation in which there's unrequited love or some sort of missed opportunity. And I feel like it's a constant miss op missed opportunity here. And on the bottom of the deck now, you do have the Hierophant. We could be talking about a marriage, um, a, an established relationship, potentially, or this could just be the status quo. This could be you going against the grain because whatever was going on in the status quo, um, in the establishment, the established relationship or whatever, institution, whatnot, whatever, is no longer, well, it never was, but you're finally getting to the point where you don't want to allow that to control your life any longer. You're finally honoring your emotions or your intuition um, letting them drive you and you're not accepting this unrequited love or this rejection any longer. You're no longer allowing the opportunity that your emotion, your emotional reality is bringing forward towards you 
to control your life anymore. You're not allowing yourself, I'm sorry, um, you're not allowing the uh, emotional situation, I'm sorry, you're not allowing the opportunity that your emotions are bringing forward towards you to be missed any longer. And then you have you right here, Sagittarius, temperance with, ooh, queen of pentacles, the lovers, the king of swords, and the fool. So yeah, you are nurturing yourself, you're making a decision that is more aligned with you, you're being objective and diplomatic, and you're taking a leap of faith. Excellent, Sagittarius. I really like that. I really like that a lot. Um, cool. Uh, you're balancing out. You're integrating here. Ace of Wands, Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Cups, Six of Wands. Damn. <laughs> Damn, Sagittarius. Like, you're really inspired to move on. I really feel like for some of you, this is definitely a learning from the contrast situation in which you're inspired to move in a direction that not only gives you financial or physical fulfillment, but emotional fulfillment. And that is a huge victory for you. Six of Wands, okay? Excellent. So let's get into the rest of the reading here. Let me give this one shuffle. All right. Here we go, Sagittarius. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Sagittarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of June, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Sag, we are going to give this five shuffles. Now, um, the energy that I was feeling as I was um, doing that prayer and that channeling right there, um, I was seeing white. So is, there is definitely a sense of innocence and purity that someone is coming to terms with or, because that's what I heard, or what I was going to say is coming back into, okay? Five shuffles. So one, for my Sagittarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of June 2019. Two. Three. Sagittarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Four. For the month of June 2019. And five. Here we go. Boop. All right. Overall energy for you, Sagittarius. We've got the magician. That's right. You are taking your power back and you are manifesting something new. Um, in who? Whoa. Okay. For some of you, you are. Huh. It's almost as if you're using someone's game against them. It's, it's, it's very much, I'm feeling a very, an energy of, I learned from the best, didn't I? <laughs> that Whitney Houston song is coming to mind. I haven't heard that song in years. I don't really know how it goes, but I do. I learned from the best, I learned from you. That's what I'm getting <laughs> from this magician here. Because you were dealing with a narcissist, potentially, or just a really manipulative person, a manipulator. But now... You've learned how to manipulate from the best of them. That doesn't mean that you're turning around and becoming a manipulator yourself. But in some cases, you yes, you are manipulating the circumstance to, to get yourself out of it, to create something better for yourself. You're not trying to hurt or harm people or take from people, steal from people, maybe the way this other person may have done. But you've learned the techniques, the methods, so that you can use that to your advantage and get the fuck out of there. Great. Great. The Hermit. You could be dealing with a Virgo energy. Uh, you could have Virgo in your chart. But this is about deep understanding of yourself and the lessons you may have needed to learn or the lessons that you have learned. Um, this is about you following your own inner light, potentially walking your own path, um, walking alone maybe. Okay. The Hermit. And ooh, there's the tower again. And... <laughs> the eight of pentacles. So now the real work comes. 
Okay, Sag? Now the real work comes because you've learned the lessons, you've been manipulated, but you understand the truth behind the manipulation. It's helped push you deeper into yourself, helped or, or caused or catalyzed your moment of going within and cleaning up the shit, and now you're emerging from it creating a tower moment, you could be dealing with a Scorpio too, you could have Scorpio in your chart, and now the work comes to rebuild your life. Or to reconstruct your life in the way that you truly want it to be, a better manifestation in terms of what you have learned so far and what you're willing or trying to change. All right, Sag. Gone, sister and brother. I know that's right. All right, so getting into your reading here, you can look at this as the first half and the second half of your month. I recommend that you look at this as the first half and the second half of your reading and just allow the energies to flow. Time is an illusion, energies are fluid. So regardless of where or when the messages come out, they all could be intertwined, 11-11. So take it as it resonates, and I just recommend that you allow the energies to flow. Now, if it does in fact, resonate as the first half and second half of your month, then please take it, but whatever, you get it. Okay, first set of surrounding energies for you, Sagittarius, and the first half of your reading here, you've got, good, the Page of Pentacles. Yes, in fact, you are starting over, turning over a new leaf, coming into a new reality. Yes, trying to find your footing, and yes, that's absolutely where the work comes in. Okay, but it's not like you're completely naive or ignorant coming into this new cycle. You have learned a lot, and you have a lot going for you. You just have to figure out how to best work it for yourself. Excellent. Page of Pentacles is coupled with... The Emperor! You could be dealing with Aries and Aries. You could have Aries in your chart. But ultimately, the Emperor is about taking your power back, taking responsibility for yourself, and driving your ship, saying, uh-uh, no, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm starting anew. Damn. Good on you, Sag. Second set of surrounding energies for you. In the first half of your reading here, you've got... The Seven of Wands. Okay, defensiveness, blockages, guardedness, boundaries. Yeah, there is a need to place greater boundaries in place, but it's not like I don't need to tell you this. You know this already, Sag. You're really, you're really having to defend yourself or guard yourself from this sociopathic, narcissistic energy that you are working your way away from. I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to make anybody paranoid. But with what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling, and what this card means, you really may need to defend yourself. You really may need to be very vigilant about you know, who you communicate with, the next steps you take, um, who you tell your plans to. You never know. You, know, you never really know. So you really, you really want to be on your P's and Q's right now if you're... Especially, whatever, regardless, you're trying to protect your, your new manifestation. So, okay, it may not be that dire. You may not have someone around you that's really trying to sabotage you. But whatever it is you're trying to manifest, it's still kind of in an infant stage. So you do want to protect it. But you also want to protect yourself. Your new sense of being, your new sense of identity, sure. Seven of Wands is coupled with... Temperance, again, here you are. That's right. So, okay, yes, you do want to have your guard up. You do want to, you know, put some boundaries in place, have some positive, beneficial um, defenses while things alchemize, while energies coalesce, come together. Okay, you need to have patience because this is a moment where the energies are actually coming together and you're alchemizing opposing or two completely different elements to create a brand new one a brand new compound altogether okay it's going to take some time energy and effort but you're also going to have to protect it okay fair enough your challenge in the first half of your reading here you've got the five of pentacles uh believe in yourself sagittarius do not allow yourself to fall into this energy of I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'll never be able to really do this. Uh, what? 
that's your challenge. Now, also, this person that if there is someone, or maybe even a group of people, or a, a, like a social circle, or maybe just like a certain members of your family or something like that, they could be coming around trying to stop you, trying to like whisper in your ear, talk about, oh, what are you, who are you fooling? Like, come on, let's be real. It's really not even that serious. Fuck them. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No way, Sag. No way. Five of Pentacles is coupled with the Ace of Cups. You need to love yourself and believe in yourself. That is your challenge here. Ain't nobody supposed to fill that cup but you, Sag. And to be quite honest, with what I'm feeling here and picking up for you guys, I really kind of feel like that's the lesson, the major biggest part of this lesson that you've been learning so far. That was meant to be learned here. Because as long as you keep your cup filled, you're Gucci, Prada, and Fendi. You ain't got to let nobody's doubts get to you. You don't have to let anybody's form of rejection, however that may manifest in your life, tear you down and make you feel inadequate any longer. Hell no. Nah. We done learned that lesson, y'all. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> your closing message or the potential outcome here in the first half of your reading, Sag, you've got the devil. <laughs> Capricorn energy, potentially, you could have a Capricorn in your life, but it's like you're literally facing the devil right now. Literally. But you're facing the devil in order to release yourself from his clutches. You're facing the devil in order to take your power back from him or her and to start your life anew, free of the devil's grasp. Devil is coupled with, God bless the fool, holy shit. <laughs> like, come on. You are literally, look, and look at this. He's facing the devil. You're literally saying, fuck you, I'm out of here. <laughs> I love it, Sag. Holy shit. And this really could have been, this really could have been a um, very toxic and codependent situation. But like I said, like I said, Sagittarius, you learned from the best. Go ahead and call yourself Whitney, honey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah, can I get an amen? All right, cool. Moving into the second half of your reading here, Sag, first set of surrounding energies, you got the Page of Wands. I love it. Self-discovery, understanding yourself on a deeper level, knowing who you truly are and what you are truly capable of and saying, God damn it, I'm going to do it now. Falls right in line with this Page of Pentacles here that came out in the first, the exact same position in the first half of the reading. Page of Pentacles, starting over. Page of Wands, under your, understanding yourself on a deeper, brand new level. That's actually really exciting. This feels super exciting. It's like, holy shit, I didn't even know I was capable of that. Well. Mm-hmm. You can do anything, honey. As long as you know yourself, you can do anything. All right. Hey, don't shoot the messenger, y'all. <laughs> Page of Wands is coupled with the High Priestess. Ooh, that's good. That's really good. And um, this is that very much secretive energy here. That's not really divulging all your secrets. However, the High Priestess is in direct communication with you right now. The High Priestess representing your intuition, but also higher sources of divine wisdom and universal information. It's li I literally see the energy of the High Priestess whispering in your ear, teaching you how to use this wand you're now discovering. Whoa, okay. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Sagittarius, you have, in the second half of your reading here, the Ten of Pentacles. 
Okay. I'm hearing that you're moving towards this. Your ultimate financial, emotional, not emotional, uh, uh, physical fulfillment, but also this is the ending of, this is a lesson learned. The ending of one cycle, moving on to the next. Completion. This is a wrapping up. To me, the Ten of Pentacles is about time um, and also represents what we come down here for to the earth, to this physical existence, to this physical 3D plane in order to spend time here. Time is an illusion, but to spend time here and learn. Lessons have been learned. Excuse me. Ten of Pentacles is coupled with, yeah, the Six of Pentacles. There's that Six of Pentacles again. You have finally learned the lesson of giving back to yourself, keeping things reciprocal, the balance between give and take. And actually, this does very much feel like family in terms of regardless of who someone is to you, even if they are your mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, uh, uh, cousin, first cousin, second cousin, third cousin, twice removed, like who the fuck cares? If the situation is not balanced, it's not healthy. It's toxic and i think you really have learned that lesson some of this um propensity towards manifesting other toxic narcissistic sociopathic relationships comes from what we learn as children it also could stem from past lives but mostly it comes from what we experienced in our family lives as children all right your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Sagimatazical, you, yes, Sagimatazical, I like that one. You have the King of Pentacles. Um, this is another uh, manifestation of taking your power back. You could be dealing with an earth sign, potentially a Virgo, because you do have the, uh, the Hermit in the beginning in the overall energy um also this could be a taurus you also have capricorn with the devil but then also you could have capricorn with the king of pentacles here okay money and physical status may be an option here i i really am picking up on someone trying to entice you to stay or not make some sort of change because of physical elements money status physical possessions maybe marriage but none of that is enough to keep you in a situation that is toxic and codependent this could be that person that you are physically codependent on and I'm getting very strongly that they could be the person that could be trying to keep you from manifesting this change. They may seem really cool, calm, and collected about it, but deep down in the surface, they're fucking losing their shit. And they're probably going to try everything they can to stop you. But that is exactly what you have been learning here exactly what you've been learning here okay okay king of pentacles is coupled with yeah the knight of wands yep 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 riding on riding on in trying to be all passionate trying to match this energy that you're discovering in yourself but it's false it's false, guys. They're only trying to tell you what they want you to hear or what they think you want to hear or need to hear. Gaslighting. King of Pentacles, Knight of Wands. Gaslighting. Be careful. But again, this is what you're learning. So yes, it makes perfect sense that you're going to have to deal with this. Eh, we'll say one final time. Yeah, it might be more than one but hey but hey as long <laughs> as long as you've learned the lesson and you've integrated that lesson you can overcome that this ain't no thing this is just a hurdle it's just a little bug i'm not condoning killing bugs but you could squash it if you wanted to y'all i don't even kill roaches in my apartment any longer scurry along so no i'm not condoning the killing of bugs but i mean 
that's that's how much you've risen or you have the opportunity, the ability to rise above this situation. You could squash that shit at any time. Or you could say to it, eh, you're insignificant. I'm not going to waste my energy and generate some karma by squashing you. So you can just scurry around, along and I'll go about my business. Bing! <laughs> okay. Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Sagamatazical. Sagamatazical! Three of Cups celebration this is the universe literally i hear it this is the universe cheering for you this is the the balance the union between body mind and spirit that is allowing you to take your own space and move forward in your life i'm literally hearing the universe cheering for you right now good on you three of cups is coupled with ten of swords this is why the universe is cheering for you because you're finally letting this cycle close out completion done over you don't have to deal with this person any longer now person people circumstance whatever now that doesn't mean it may not come back to test you a little bit but ultimately that's just you further integrating the lesson and doing the work to continue manifesting that which you truly desire yes Wow, Sag, this is great. Okay, let's get into your Oracle card now. For my Sagittarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this message for the month of June 2019 or just whenever it resonates for you. One more shuffle. For my Sagittarians, 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 Sagittarians. Here we go. Best message, please, Spirit, to close out this reading for my Sagittarius. Oh, wow. Okay. Come to life. Who was it that got this? I think... Didn't Scorpio get this? I guess so. Yeah. Scorpio got this, I guess. I don't remember completely, but I think it was Scorpio. But you have card 43. Come to life. Let's get into it. Now, bear with me, guys. This one, some of these definitions can be pretty lengthy, and this is one of them. So just settle in. Get comfy. Because this is actually, but this is also a really good 43. This is a really good message. Okay. Here we go. Come to life. You are the most sacred of all sacred artworks. Maybe it wasn't Scorpio. I really don't remember who it was now. Sorry, guys. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Doesn't matter. This is for you, Sagittarius. So let's just get with it. Let's continue, Eric. Jesus. <laughs> you are the most sacred of all sacred artworks. You are bringing yourself to life now, and this is how it must be. Of course, something being essential doesn't mean it will always be easy. You must support yourself and have courage during this process. Your monkey mind is not to run the show. It might have a lot to say, and at times it seems very convincing, but it is not the one in charge. Your mind can inspire you with ideas. However, it is the real you that speaks through your rebellious, sacred heart and is living your life, not the monkey mind. The mind is not much more than a swirling ca uh, cacophony. Yes, the mind is not much more than a swirling cacophony of habitual reactions. Sorry, itchy chin, itchy chin, itchy chin. Okay. Beneath habitual thoughts, there is a deep, sensual, creative, and energetic awakening happening to you. It is so far beyond what the mind is now capable of controlling. Others might not like it because it shakes things up. The tower. Coming to life tends to do that. However, it is happening now, and the only real choice you have to make is how to deal with it. Coming to life means feeling. It might bring joy, but it could equally bring sadness, rage, or fear. It could bring all of these and more. Feelings will come and go quite swiftly when allowed to flow. You might need to paint, write, enact rituals, sing, or dance your feelings to help keep the energy flow to help the energy flow. Don't hold back. Create the space for yourself to do it. 
In this process, you are uncovering the artistry of the universal creator. You are honoring the sacredness of life by exploring it without restraint, and that includes the flow of your feelings. You don't have to do anything with them other than express. You might want to analyze, or you may not. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you are getting in touch with feeling. Learning how to access your feelings allows you to learn how to access your intuition, creative inspiration, and genuine internal guidance. These aspects flow from the same place and are often couched within your feelings in the form of emotions as well as physical sensations. The journey underneath the mind and into a sensual emotional connection with your feelings, emotions, and body is for a sacred purpose. It is a part of your path. You are on, I'm sorry, you are one of the sacred but powerful minority that have chosen to come into a body and live consciously within it. That may seem like it applies to everybody, but when you experience it for yourself, you will realize that it is actually rather rare. There are plenty of bodies within a spirit really ri uh, there are, I'm sorry, there are plenty of bodies without a spirit really residing within to care for, love, and honor them as a sacred animal. Fortunately, this minority is powerful enough that it can keep human culture in, balanced, in, in, in balance, but only just. We need every single one of us that is capable to be aware of the task and move beyond the mind and into the body. This is especially so if you have drawn the oracle of beyond the mind the heart beats, but we haven't. <laughs> to come into your sensuality, you will need to anchor your experiences. You may, ha you may be blessed with relationships that are conscious enough to be interested in your journey in a constructive rather than controlling or undermining way. If so, talk, converse, share. If not, then you will need to be more resourceful in how you support yourself through your awakening process, at least until you attract some more conscious connections in your life. It is likely that these connections are already on their way just because you are working with the energy of this oracle. You can support your own process by scheduling time for yourself and keeping to it like you would the most important date with destiny. So get to writing in your journal, do your dances, paint your pictures, create your creations, be kind to your body, listen to it, and let it be alive. Even in times of pain, know that there will also be ecstasy and bliss as the process of healing and awakening continues. The message of this oracle is be alive. Don't imagine you can go back to sleep. You are too awake for that now. There's no falling back into old ways. If you do so, it will be short-lived and won't feel the same as it used to. You may grieve this. You will certainly, eventually, separate, celebrate it. You have crossed the threshold from being an old way, I'm sorry, you have crossed the threshold from an old way of being into a li and, oh, geez, Eric, hold on, try that again. You have crossed the threshold from an old way of being in an old life and try as you might, you cannot return. It is better to let it go. Grieve if need be, celebrate if need be, or do both and move on into this moment. There is another adventure awaiting you now. You need a deeper connection to your own instincts, body, feelings, and intuitions so that you can receive this new calling. You can trust in it too. Embrace it and it will embrace you. So there you have it, Saj. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. Much, much love to you guys. I hope you have a great June. And I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of July. Yes? Mwah! Take care. Bye.